2 Timothy and chapter 4. Look at just uh, two verses tonight, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 9, Paul writes, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Demas is not a popular name among expectant parents. In fact, I don't believe that I've ever met a person named Demas. No Christian would choose this name that is associated with disgrace and disappointment. No one wants to be associated with a quitter, fractured from the faith, a casualty in the cause, an acute problem to the Apostle Paul, another number in the mortality rate in the ministry ranks. While Demas is void of fame, he does seem to have a vast following. His name may be abhorred and rejected, but his example seems to be admired and repeated. The Demas disease seems to elude all antibiotic. No prescription can seemingly break its power. Will the Demas disease thin the ranks of the laborers trained for harvest here at West Coast Baptist College? As this class makes its way across the platform now in a few hours, they will join graduates around the world nearly 2,700 all over the globe. And I often wonder, as they graduate, will they survive the Demas disease? There are three stages that lead to a fatal stage four Demas disease. I believe we see it all in verse number 10. We see a disengagement from ministry. The Bible says there, for Demas hath forsaken me. Now Paul was in the ministry and Paul was very grateful to be in the ministry. In fact, Paul was thankful that God had placed him in such a place to serve him with his life. He writes about it in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Paul viewed the ministry as a wonderful privilege. He viewed the ministry as something very special in his life as he writes to uh, the Colossian church there in Colossians 4 and verse 17. He says, and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received of the Lord that thou fulfill it. In 2 Corinthians 5, Paul writes, all things are of God who hath reconciled himself to Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Understand tonight that whatever we are privileged to do for the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed a privilege. And Paul was delighted. Paul was thankful. Paul was humbled by the fact that God would place him in the ministry. And Paul recognizes ministry as a sacred calling. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 3, he says, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Oh, how we need to take seriously this matter of the ministry. 
that some little action or perhaps a word or perhaps an, a wrong reaction could put a stain or a blot upon the sacred ministry of God. And I believe that Paul informs us that ministry is for life. Uh, there is no retreat. There is no exit. There is no retirement from the ministry. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance, he wrote in Romans 11 and verse 29. Paul felt privileged to be in the ministry. And in Acts 20 and verse 24, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel, the grace of God. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. He tells Timothy, make full proof of thy ministry. I'm thankful that here at West Coast Baptist College, we have countless examples of people who have been faithful. Amen. You've seen a bit of it tonight. Faithful in the ministry. No doubt times when it would have been easy to disengage. There were times, no doubt, when there was discouragement or, or difficulty that would have caused many to, to do something else. But I'm thankful that students at West Coast Baptist College have example after example after example of those who have stayed true to the ministry. Of course, it starts with our pastor and his wife. 33 years in one place, faithfully preaching Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday for 33 years, investing in people's lives, in their home, in their office, encouraging and counseling and mentoring and, and, and all of the administration and all of the things that go with any kind of ministry. And I, I, I think all of us are grateful and, and honored to be in a place where we have someone as pastor who is faithful in the ministry. Amen. I think of Dr. Shepherd. He doesn't have to be in the ministry. He retired once. But in his retirement years, decided, I want to be in the ministry. I think of Dr. Rasmussen and his wife, Dr. Shetler, 40 years of ministry. These are amazing people. These are people that have gifts and abilities that God has blessed them with, and yet they've decided, I'm going to give these things to the Lord. I'm going to let God use me in the ministry. I think of the weavers. Nearly 50 years in the ministry. I think of Dr. and Mrs. Goddard, married this summer, 45 years serving in the ministry. I think of the house. Over three decades here, investing in our young people, mentoring the next generation and the one after that and the one after that. Amen. And for three decades have, have given themselves to the ministry. I think of Dr. Lester. I know some of you still think he's 18. <laughs> He starts his 25th year of ministry here in this place next week. Amen. I think of Brother Spaeth, who we honor tonight, 25 years. Amen. I think of Dr. and Mrs. Stensis. A man literally wore out physically at the edge all invested every ounce of of what he has physically invested in ministry i think of brother and mrs cox 
Larry and Amy came here as newlyweds. Now their kids are getting married, finishing college. All of those years invested right here in the ministry. Brother England, the director of institutional effectiveness. Not only did we give him that title, he wanted it. (laughs) And he embraces it. And that's just a small part of what he does. An amazing teacher, an amazing mind. Dr. England, Brother England could do anything in this world he wanted to do. Anything. He could have any job in America. His mind is beyond comprehension. (laughs) He read 70 books last year. Not as part of his doctoral. Those are just, these are just the ones he likes to read. (laughs) And he sends me a list of all 70 and he grades them one to 10. If they're under six, he says, don't bother reading it. And he gives me a synopsis of each book. I don't have to read it. I already know. I got the cliff notes. (laughs) Brother England. Amazing. I think of Brother Thomas Shepard. Brother Jesse Jones. Brother David Adams. These men are some of the most incredible young leaders I've ever been associated with. I I can't even think as fast as they work. They're amazing. And here at the beginning of their their life, so to speak, in their 30s and late 20s, they're investing those things, those gifts that God has given them in the ministry. Brother Tyler, the head of our music program and how that program has grown and how it's flourished under his leadership and, and just the, the work ethic that he has and the, the desire for excellence. You saw it tonight. Amen. Amen. Mrs. Demersion. What an amazing lady. Amen. I told her when we hired her, I said, Mrs. Demersion, I, I love watching you in the choir. I love watching you teach. I mean, you, you just, you teach me with your eyes. I would hate to be married to you, but I, you just, <laughs> your ability to communicate. <laughs> and I've sat with her this past spring with our faculty in the education department and watched her mentor our young teachers in the ministry. I think of Brother Sultanic. Some of you might not know who Brother Sultanic is. Brother Sultanic building our, our media program here in the college. Brother Sultanic recently received an award nationally given to only 170 people in the whole world. He's just starting in the ministry, and yet has reached levels of achievement that are unbelievable. Given his talents, he could be making six figures, seven figures in the talents that he has, and yet has devoted it to the ministry. And I think of the educators that stand day after day behind a lectern in a classroom week after week after week, pouring their lives into our students, Brother Furso and Brother Larry Chappell and Brother Randy Wells and Brother Weddock and Brother Dr. Warren and Dr. Allen and Mrs. Lake and Mrs. Shetler and and, and Peter and Danielle Mord and Mrs. Whitman and Mrs. Harris and Mrs. Williams and Mrs. Haynes and Miss Gregory and Miss Carter and Miss Davis and Miss Houck and Mrs. Odenthal and Tyler Johnson. Johnson and Brother Hopkins and Mrs. Gross and Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Roger Ottenham. I mean, I could go on and on. I probably missed somebody, but I didn't intend to. These people investing their life in the ministry. And that's just the academic. 
I think of our staff. The finance department, led by Brother Hobbs. Mrs. Chapman. You, you won't find a more consistent person in your life than Mrs. Chapman. I mean, I, I, think she, I think she's gonna wear out the parking lot where she walks. She just, it's the same, it's the same steps every day. <laughs> it's faithful. That office is run like corporate America. Mrs. Messerschmidt and Ms. Hale and their team and volunteers that they have come in to help us in those busy moments of registration. Amazing. I think of our HR department, Mrs. Atherton and Ms. Black. I think of uh, the enrollment office under Brother Jones, Mrs. Lester and Michael Coppold and Bethany Pisney. I think of the dean's office under Dr. Shetler's leadership and Mrs. Denke, our dean of women and Brother Williams, Reggie Williams and Josh Montana and, and Brother Gary Williams and Mrs. Alvarez. And, and then I think of Miss Ayer. You talk about faithful. You talk about somebody that just day after day after day sits behind a desk and makes that whole thing hum over there. A job that most people would not desire, most people would not really want trying to serve all these different people and yet faithful. Student activities under Dr. Shetler with Brother Fleming and, and Luke Shetler. And I think of Christian service and Brother Rule and Brother Bundy and Brother Bird as they help us at enrollment times to get our students into ministries. And then I think of the academic office under Dr. Lester. We got a bunch of rookies in there. We've got four young ladies in there this year. This is their first graduation. I'm nervous. <laughs> Ms. Longhofer. Ms. Stoner, Ms. Donye, Ms. Tapansa, amazing young ladies. Could be doing a lot of things, but faithful to the ministry. I think of our IT, Brother Francis, the man we love and hate the most. <laughs> we love him, we hate him. I mean, within seconds. But when we hate him, we realize how important he is. And he's just faithful. Many times all night fixing. So when we come into our office, we can work in the ministry. I think of our librarians, Mrs. Sultanic, Linda Parker, Kelly McKnight. I think of our receptionist, Vicki Reyes and Deanna Williams. I think of student assistance offices, Brother Deverick. Brother, Mrs. Deverick have been married 35 years. Faithful in the ministry. Brother Lee Johnson, Brother Chassani. I think of the bookstore, one of the finest bookstores anywhere. Brother Cox and Brother Bishop and a whole host of volunteers. Many of you spend some time out there volunteering. I think of food service. Oh my, if somebody needs to be faithful, it's food service. Miss Harvin, what an amazing young lady. Brother Willie de Leon, Arlene Francis, and Ben Morris, and, and many of you going out there day after day to serve meals and helping our students and encouraging them. I think of security with Brother Blakely and Brother Alvarez, Brother Odenthal. I think of Denise Wells, our project manager. I think of our yearbook and Amy Houck. And I, I think of the scheduling office with Mrs. Burt and Ms. Galeon and, and, and Mrs. Patrick and, and Mrs. Rasmus. And I think of our sports program with Brother Beeson and Christy Kelly and, and Brother Sisson. I think of Tyler Johnson, who assists pastor with college development. I think of Nicole Torbison, who serves as pastor's college secretary. And I, I think of Tim Bundy, who, who is uh, Brother Shetler's uh, uh, administrative assistant. And I think of Savannah Soto, who, who, who puts up with Dr. R every day as his assistant. <laughs> and there's a lady sitting over here, Carrie Schmidt, who's made me look good for 15 years. These are faithful people. And you go ahead and point to the few who've done something else. You go ahead and point to the few graduates that have defected. 
And I'll point to a whole host of people Amen. that have served as faithful examples to the 2,700 that are out there serving the Lord Amen. in ministry. They have fought the Demas disease. They could have defected. They could have disengaged. They could have disgraced. And may I say to you, whether I gave your name or I forgot it, well done, Amen. thou good and faithful servant. Demas hath forsaken me. A disengagement from ministry. And I see, secondly, a dangerous mingling. You see, the Demas disease doesn't start with a departure from ministry. It starts with a dangerous mingling. In verse 10, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. The capacity to love is a gift from God. All of us have a capacity to love. God has placed that within the human heart. He's put it within the DNA of a human being. We all have the capacity to love, but what we love is our choice. God presents himself as the single and supreme choice of our love. In fact, he commands us, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Now, the world presents a whole smorgasbord of choices as to what we can love. We can fall in love with ourselves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. We can fall in love with sin. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. We can fall in love with stuff, but take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesseth. We can fall in love with success, but he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. We can fall in love with sleep, Most of our students have. <laughs> but you know, we can fall in love with ease and comfort. And God says, love not sleep, lest thy poverty come to thee. Now, we don't know which entree Demas chose from this smorgasbord of the world, but it doesn't really matter. It took him out of the ministry. And the devil, no doubt, will offer the class of 2019 some choices with respect to what they love. You can perform without love. But you can't please without love. And you'll never persevere without love. The church of Ephesus was a wonderful church, a church that had a great record, a church that had some great history for the Lord. But the Lord had to say to them in the book of Revelation chapter 2, thou hast left thy first love. You see, no one lasts in the ministry with a lost love. Demas hath forsaken me, a disengagement from the ministry, but it started with a dangerous mingling with some aspect of the world. And we see finally tonight a devastating mistake. In verse 10, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. The present and the permanent are two different things. Now, oftentimes, we don't like something in the present. I'm sure that every person I named a moment ago who serves here in the ministry have had days where something was not real attractive in the present. It might have been part of their job description. It might have been someone they were trying to help. It, it, it might have been a task that needed to be completed. There are things in the ministry in the present that sometimes we dislike or, or we'd rather not deal with. 
And often what happens is when we don't like what's in the present, we look for something else in the present. And we go from present things to present things. And all that is here in this world is the present and it's all temporal. And we don't like the present and so we look for something else in the present. And we go from job to job and ministry to ministry or thing to thing or whatever it is and we never find fulfillment. Why? Because we've made a dangerous mistake. Because all that's present is temporary. When Demas fell in love with the present world, he got his eyes off of the permanent. He got his eyes off of that which is lasting. And you won't make it, class of 2019. You won't make it, church member. You won't make it in ministry if you're going to go from the present to another present to another present to another present. The ministry depends on our eyes being upon the eternal. We hear so much about plans. We got plans for today. We got plans for tonight. We got plans for tomorrow. We got a one-year plan. We got a five-year plan. We got a right retirement plan. We got a savings plan. We got a career plan. Does anybody have an eternal plan? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. If you're going to make it in the ministry, if you're going to stay in the ministry, if you're not going to depart from the ministry, you've got to get your mind off this present world and you've got to get it on the world to come. Amen. That which is permanent. The day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. Years ago, I was traveling in evangelism and held a meeting for a man named Reuben Ezra Kyle. His name scared me half to death. <laughs> Dr. Kyle was a short man, rather stocky, had snow white hair. He had a large face, and when he talked, his jowls kind of jiggled. He had a very deep voice. He sounded like God to me. <laughs> His wife had been a Catholic nun, and she got saved, and they married, and never had any children. God put them in the ministry. Dr. Kyle was a man of very few words. I remember going soul winning with him every day as we'd be in those meetings, and we'd ride in the car sometimes for an hour without him saying a word. But when he spoke, you wanted to be sure to hear everything he said. One day we were in that car and we're just driving along. And I don't know what prompted it. But he kind of half turned toward me and he said, John, my wife and I decided a long time ago we weren't going to live for the ashtray. That's all he said. I didn't say, oh. I didn't say, what do you mean by that? I knew exactly what he meant. And I don't know why he said it. Maybe he saw a tinge of materialism in me. Maybe he saw my focus getting off of the things that were permanent. I don't know, but I'm thankful he said it. I'm not going to live for the ashtray. What he meant is everything here is one day going to be burned up. It's all going to be ashes. Your career, your bank account, your house, your car, it's all gone. It's all the present world. And seeing then, Peter goes on to say, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be 
in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be diligent that ye may be found in him without spot, in peace, and blameless. Listen, Demas was attracted to the world because it offered happiness and it offered health, perhaps. It offered wisdom, it offered riches, but God is offering you peace without spot and blameless. There's a lot of places on the road of ministry where you can exit. But exit to what? Maybe better question, exit from what? In John 6, verse 66, from that time, many, from that time on, many of his disciples walked no more with him. And Jesus looked at the 12, and he said, will you also go away? I'm sure when Pastor Chapel looks at our list of alumni, he sees some. That have the Demas disease. And he would say to this class of 2019, and he would say to the junior class and the sophomore class and the freshman class and the one year Bible, will you also go away? And I'm thankful Peter said, to whom shall we go? Amen. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. Friend, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of exits. There's a lot of things in this present world you can do. But where are you going? There's only one worth serving. There's only one thing worth doing with your life. And that's living for the permanent, Amen. living for that which is eternal. Thank God for West Coast Baptist College, Amen. training laborers to go into the ministry of the harvest. Amen. Will you join the ranks? Amen.